Hi everyone, welcome to a game called Choices That Matter and the Sun Went Out. I've never played this before, so this is a new experience for me. I do know that it is a choice game. Obviously it's a choice game, the word choice is in the title. I got it very cheap on the Nintendo Switch eStore, along with two other Choices That Matter games. So I believe this is the first one, and we're just going to get right into it. Day 95 and the orange ball of gas that sustained life on this planet for billions of years was still burning in the sky. The scientists were completely wrong, thankfully. Something vibrated on my wrist. I raised my hand and studied the watch-like device. It was Modicom, or simply Modi, as I called them. Hello, teacher. The temperature this afternoon is a crisp 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I do hope you're wearing your warm jacket. Don't forget that you also need to pick up the travel documents from Miss Montague. She's expecting you at her home. Stepping out of the train car, I adjusted my coat. Modi was right. I should have worn the one with the wool linen. Wool lining. Too late to worry about that now. Dolores Montague's house wasn't too far away from the train station. As my boots crunched through the snow, I felt Modi vibrating on my wrist. As ever, Modi's cheerful face greeted me. You have just received a message from Professor Soul. He is insisting you see his latest breakthrough right away. Should I rendezvous with Dolores or visit Professor Soul? Let's rendezvous with Dolores. The professor will have to wait until later, Modi. We've got to get those tickets and my passport from Dolores. Would you like to know the location of Miss Montague's residence? No thanks, Modi. I've got this. No problem, teacher. You know where I am. I remembered her address. 1204 South Street. Not too far away. Before I knew it, I was knocking on her front door. It's about time you turned up. The door was opened by Dolores, a tall woman with olive skin and shoulder-length dark hair. The dim light made her features difficult to make out, and her body language suggested she was a little tired. I came as soon as I could. This music is creepy. Um, okay, so I ask anything wrong, or where are the travel documents? Yeah, let's see if anything's wrong. Anything wrong? Nothing. Thanks for your concern, though. You don't need to worry about me. I've known Dolores long enough to realize that she wouldn't let you know how she was feeling, even if there was an issue. Everything went off without a hitch. Dolores was holding a folder in her hand, presumably the one I was here for. Did anyone see you? Was there any trouble? Was there any trouble? Was there any trouble? There never is. We're professionals. So the travel documents? Dolores handed me the folder. I looked inside and saw the usual stuff. A passport, plane tickets, credit card, and itinerary. Itinerary scanned and stored. Travel destination? Peru. So I'm heading to, headed to Peru? While I couldn't see Dolores' expression in the, that light, I could tell she wasn't impressed with the situation. Looks like it rest up, it'll be a long flight. We said our goodbyes quickly and I sensed that Dolores was still angry at my decision. Our heated discussion that previous day was still fresh in my mind. Will we be heading to Peru right away? Remembering Sol's message, I sighed. Not yet, Modi. We still have to find out what the professor wants. What the professor has to tell me. Sometimes I wish I hadn't hired Sol. His paranoia could be stifling. But I did hire him. I started making my way towards the professor's house. You sound upset, teacher. Has there also been a disagreement with the professor? Does he have the same concerns as Miss Montague? It's different, Modi. Be quiet, Modi. No, I'm not going to be rude. It's different, Modi. With the professor, it's more about his general personality. Can't you teach him to behave better, teacher? 
I chuckled. No, Modi, I'm not his teacher. He's too old to have one. Okay, that's too bad because I think you're an excellent teacher. I only smiled in response. While we were going through the city, my thoughts were interrupted by an elderly man standing in the middle of a plaza, sandwiched by large cardboard signs. Frozen hell is coming for everyone. I should be used to those by now. Those doomsday signs started three months ago after the temporary sun outage incident. Is frozen hell coming for me too, teacher? Hell isn't real, Modi. Only humans go to hell, Modi. Hell isn't real, Modi. I understand, teacher. Now that I was thinking about it, I wondered if that was strictly true considering how freezing cold it was this winter. It was a good thing Modi couldn't feel the chill. After about 20 minutes, I finally arrived. I wrapped my arms around myself and shivered a little. It was snowing throughout the entire journey. I crossed the lawn and pushed the buzzer around the front door. No response. I tried again, still nothing. The door was locked, obviously. Maybe he had gone out. Pick the lock. Look for another way in. Yeah, look for another way in. Perhaps there was an open window or something. It suddenly occurred to me that I had never seen much of the professor's home. I walked around the property, stuttering. <laughs> I walked around the property, studying every possible entrance. The windows were either too high or bolted shut. Why are the windows bolted, teacher? The professor suffers from a rather severe case of paranoia, Modi. Like most scientists after the incident. Why is he suffering from paranoia? Can it be fixed? I chuckled. Don't I wish, Modi. Don't I wish. Walking around the house, I found myself in the backyard looking at the professor's back door. I tried it, and to my surprise, it swung open with ease. Why wasn't it locked? Upon further examination, I realized the lock was broken. Don't be careful, te- oh. <laughs> Don't be careful. Please be careful, teacher. I cautiously stepped inside the professor's home. There was a large suitcase sitting by the front door. From its from its bulging from its bulging sides, I had the impression that it was overpacked. Was Sol going somewhere? He hadn't said anything about a trip. I hate that. That comes out of nowhere. It scares the hell out of me. Suddenly, my phone rang, surprising me. Yeah, it surprised me. It's Miss Montague, teacher. Would you like to answer it? Sure, put her through. Not, not now. Mike. Yeah, put her through. Dolores, what's up? You might want to turn on the TV, she stated. I'm not home right now. Hang on, I think there's a TV upstairs. I gripped the railing and headed up the steps, each wooden stair creaking and groaning as I went. Climbing into the attic, most of it was covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Disused boxes, papers, books, and paraphernalia crowded most of the tiny space. Hurry up, she urged. Patience, Dolores. Just got here, give me a moment. Just got here, give me a moment. And she knows. One area, however, had seen frequent use. A crude desk made from access boxes and planks. Sitting atop it was an exquisite clockwork model of the solar system. There was, however, no television. The professor must have sold it since I was last up there. No TV up here either, Dolores. You'll have to tell me what's on it. The sound of her sigh came through the phone. I could practically see her frowning in annoyance. Very well. Do you remember Philip Argyle? The CEO of Flare Energy, the arrogant CEO who's been whining constantly since the incident? Yes, we'll go with that one. Yes, him, Dolores confirmed approvingly. Listen to this. I could hear the television in the background getting louder. Flare Energy stock prices plummeted to an all-time low. The CEO, Philip Argyle, is reassuring of investors that this is merely a temporary setback. I whistled. Sounds like he's in trouble. He won't last the night. 
You think so? Yes, luckily he's already settled his account. That's something at least. Are we responsible for this? Ooh. Ooh, okay, we're gonna go with this one. Are we responsible for this? No, and neither are any of our connections, Dolores assured. Ooh, I wonder what's going on. Good to hear. With nothing else of interest in the attic, I decided to explore elsewhere. I passed by the bulging luggage at the front door as I climbed down the second flight of stairs, headed for the basement. Never go to the basement. Not with this music in the background. Ah uh, yes, there's something else I forgot to tell you earlier. It's quite important. Hang on, it's a little dark down here. As I, s I said as I felt along the basement wall, the entire room was pitch black. It's not a good idea. You see, oh, someone's at the door. Won't be a moment. I could hear her footsteps fade as she walked to the front door. Continue feeling along the wall for the light switch. Try for the gas lamp in the middle of the room. No, continue to feel along the wall. This wouldn't be my first time having to find the light switch in this room. The professor sometimes worked in total darkness, especially recently. Feeling my way along the wall... A loose piece of rope brushed against the back of my fingers. Found it, I smiled. I pulled the light switch cord, only to reveal a grim discovery. Oh no, I knew this was going to be bad. Professor Soul was dead. Lying on his front, the professor's back exposed a large bullet wound. His white lab coat splattered with blood. Bile rose in my throat as I and I gagged, covering my mouth with my hand. My work had always been dangerous, but I'd never been confronted with the body of a friend before. My heart pounded, making me dizzy. A hundred thoughts and emotions raced through my mind at all at once. What did this mean? Why would someone kill him? Did it have anything to do with what we were doing? Wait, was that someone at Dolores' door? Dolores Oh shit Dolores don't answer the Bang An ear splitting gunshot sound rang through the receiver Yeah but yeah I'm hearing something else Oh is there gonna be like screams that are gonna happen out of nowhere in this game Like other like, not jump scares on the screen But like in my headphones is that gonna be a thing Oh no I don't wanna play this no more This game is so creepy the line went silent. There isn't time. Call for help. Stay on the line and try to listen. I don't want... I, I mean, that's the right answer, I think. That's what I should do, is stay on the line and try to listen. But I'm, I'm getting freaked out. There's silence. I had to reach Dolores. I scrambled to my feet and bounded up the stairs, keeping the phone glued to my ear, hoping that Dolores would speak again. Teacher, this is most alarming. I am concerned for Miss Montague's future. Me too, Modi. I pulled open the front door and felt a cold blast of air hit my face. It had begun to snow again. I have calculated that it will take you between 25 and 30 minutes to reach Miss Montague's residence. I knew that I could probably get there in half the time if I called a taxi. That would mean cutting off my connection to Dolores' phone, however. Ooh. I mean, there was a gunshot. It just seems like time is of the essence. Seems better to get there as fast as possible. It had been five minutes since I called the taxi. I was getting cold and the snowfall was becoming heavier by the minute, obscuring the sky. I have calculated that the taxi company you called for is operating at 32.8% outside of optimum punctuality. My, my hypothesis is that the weather conditions are causing this delay. Son of a bitch! Continue to wait, make my way on foot. Mm, that sucks. Ooh. Yeah, I would probably, if it were me, I would, I would start to walk. I had no time to spare. I needed to reach Dolores as soon as Pops. Pops. <laughs> popsicle. I had no time to spare. I needed to reach Dolores as soon as possible. I favored my odds of reaching her house quicker than if I had took the non-existent cab. I began walking. 
I have checked meteorological. I'm surprised I said that. Databases in this weather system should be passing very soon. I actually said that. I can say that word, but I can't say, like, tiny words. Almost on cue, the snow began to thin out. It took around 30 minutes to make my way across town. As I arrived at South Street, I made a left past the diner, a favorite meeting spot for Dolores and myself. In the distance, I could see that the red and blue flashing lights of police cars parked up ahead. I quickened my pace. Was she even still alive? Teacher, due to recent events, I would advise against telling police who you are. There's a very high probability that they will think you have been involved with whatever event has taken place at Miss Montague's residence. Modi was right. Now was not the time to reveal my identity, especially after Sol's murder. Something was afoot, and it was too much of a coincidence to have both events happen in the same afternoon. I needed to find out more before revealing my hand. Still, speaking to an officer was the best way to find out what hap had happened to Dolores. Was it worth the risk, or was there something else I could do? I say don't talk to the cops. I think it's only going to cause more trouble. Because I have no idea what his secret is. I just think it's probably best just to not speak to the officer. Nah, it was too risky, but perhaps I could eavesdrop instead. That's what I'm saying. Just walk around like you're just some, like, innocent neighbor. A crowd was gathering to see what all the fuss was about. I made my way behind an inquisitive young couple with small children that stood near two police officers. They were also eavesdropping. You can always count on nosy neighbors. We've searched the property, and there is no sign of either an intruder or the occupant. Oh, they took her. I've sent forensics, as there is a lot of blood in the kitchen. There is also a bloodied bread knife that was lying in the far corner, which I can only assume was the attack weapon. I felt sick in the pit of my stomach. Was this Dolores' blood? A female officer suddenly strode out of Dolores' front door, speaking on the phone. She lowered it and covered the mouthpiece as she shouted across the, across to another officer leaning on one of the cars. You better drink up, Patterson. We have a body on the other side of town. A professor of something. A professor of something or other. I would strongly suggest we leave this location as soon as possible, teacher. While we have no confirmation that Miss Montague is still alive, we also do not have confirmation that she is dead. This is not a totally unacceptable outcome. Modi was right. I needed to get out of here, and quickly. Something was happening, and I wasn't sure what. I, quick I quickly turned and headed down a nearby road that ran pe perpendicular to South Street. I needed to get back home and prepare my trip. Call a taxi, take a bus. Well, clearly the taxi didn't work really well, so let's go with, the, go with the bus. The journey home was passed in silence. I watched as the snow started falling again, more heavily than before. Whether or not the colder weather could be at attributed to the sun incident was a hot topic among meteorologists. I hate that. I don't expect it, and it's loud, and it's sudden, and it just makes me jump. When I finally walked into my apartment, Modi pinged me on my wrist. What are we doing tomorrow, teacher? That's a good question. I reached into my jacket and pulled out the itinerary from Dolores. We should stick to the plan and head to Peru, Modi. What about Miss Montague? Nothing we can do about it now, Modi. She can take care of herself, Modi. And kind of both, I would guess? I mean, we don't know if she can take care of herself, because we don't know if she's alive. Is there anything we can do about it? I don't know your secret. I don't know what you're capable of. We'll be, we'll be positive, and we'll give her some credit. She can take care of herself, Modi. Okay, teacher. Peru it is. As I lay in my bed, I thought about the events of the day. I mean, should you even be home? You're connected to these two other people who've... You know, either been killed or attacked in some way. And you're just, like, chilling at home. Maybe you should have, like, fled. What had happened to Sol and Dolores? Right. What had happened to Sol and Dolores? It couldn't be a coincidence they were both attacked on the same day. 
Yeah, man, you, you might be next. Was the murder or after the research or something else? I felt fatigue taking over my body. My mind sinking slowly into slumber. Stealing a moment of peace. Arc 1 completed. Cool, interesting. You and 27% of players will be flying to Peru in the morning. Okay. Well, that seems like a good place to end this episode. It looks like I've been recording for a little under a half an hour, 28 minutes. I mean, sure, we can do short episodes on this one. I guess each arc, I will do a um an arc and episode, I guess. Okay, we'll end this episode here. You know, I'm very curious to see what this big secret is, what it is that they're researching... And I wonder how this plays into the sun and everything that that happened so far with the weather. You know, but it, it, it's got, like, some creepy tones to it. Like, the music is creepy and just, like, the whole, all the secrets and, you know, obviously there there's a killer. So it's all creepy. All right, I might even jump into the next arc right now because I'm kind of curious to see uh, what's going to happen in, in Peru. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. See you next time.